The melodic minor is one of the three main minor scales in music. But what makes the melodic minor particularly interesting is that it's the only scale in Western music that uses different notes going up than it does going down. When ascending, the melodic minor is like the harmonic minor, but with a raised sixth degree. But when descending, the melodic minor is actually identical to the natural minor scale, otherwise known as the Aeolian mode. The melodic minor is actually quite rare in pop or rock music, and is usually found in jazz or classical music. However, one notable exception to that is Yesterday by the Beatles. Yesterday starts out in the key of F major. However, by the third bar, we have modulated to the relative minor of D minor. Now, during this shift to the relative minor, the melody ascends up the D melodic minor scale. We can see this from the characteristic raised sixth and raised seventh notes here. Yesterday, all my trouble seems so far away. But when the melody descends, McCartney follows the convention of playing the scale differently on the way down, climbing down the natural minor scale, as we can see from the lowered sixth and lowered seventh here. The melodic minor is also present in the harmony. As we ascend, we can see the raised sixth, the B natural, is in this E minor chord. And as we descend, the chords now feature the lowered sixth and seventh, for example, this B flat chord and this C chord. Considering that pop and rock music would usually tend towards the natural or harmonic minor scales, it's intriguing that Paul McCartney was instead drawn towards the melodic minor when he wrote Yesterday. If Yesterday followed the more typical harmonic minor scale, for example, it would sound like this. This still sounds fine, of course, but it has a far more serious and dramatic sound to it. The melodic minor is smoother, more melancholic, and arguably more melodic. So did McCartney consciously choose to use the melodic minor when he was writing yesterday? Well, I don't think so. However, considering that he actually did abide by the ascending and descending rules for the melodic minor scale, I think it's probably quite likely that he was subconsciously inspired to use it, perhaps after hearing it used in a jazz piece, or a classical piece. After all, McCartney claims that the melody for yesterday came to him in a dream, and that he thought it sounded so unlike something that he would write that he was sure he must have ripped it off from somewhere else. And I had a piano by the bed, and I just woke up one morning with this tune in my head. Um, I thought, I don't know this tune, or do I? It's like an old jazz tune or something, And because my dad used to know a lot of old jazz stuff. Well, maybe I've just remembered it or somewhere. So I sort of got, went to the piano, found the chords to it, you know, it was like in G, F sharp minor, seven, sort of B and that. And um, I kind of re just remembered it, made sure I remembered it. And then I just hawked it around all my friends and stuff and said, what's this, you know, it's got to be something. It's like a good little tune, you know, and I couldn't have written it because I just dreamed it, you know. You don't get that lucky. So if the melodic minor isn't as common as the harmonic minor or natural minor scales, then why does it deserve to be one of the three main minor scales? After all, there are many other minor scales out there like the double harmonic minor or the Neapolitan minor scale. Well, even though there are actually dozens of different minor scales, there is a reason why we consider these three to be the main minor scales. The natural minor or the Aeolian mode is effectively the default minor scale hence natural. So the natural minor is the main minor scale, and then the harmonic minor and the melodic minor are two variations of that scale, each used to fix a different musical problem. In fact, to really understand the problem that the melodic minor scale fixes, we need to first take a look at what the harmonic minor scale is for. The harmonic minor is a variation used to make it easier to write harmony, hence harmonic minor. When writing music in the natural minor scale, 
it can be hard to get a strong sense of resolution, as the seventh note of the natural minor is a whole tone away from the octave. The harmonic minor fixes this problem by raising the seventh note so it's only a semitone away from the octave. We call this raised seventh the leading tone as it leads us up onto the octave to resolve. The semitone interval between the 7th and 8th degrees of the scale creates a tension that yearns to be resolved, creating a driving force behind our chord progressions. So the harmonic minor was developed as a minor scale that could write more functional harmony and sound more resolved. However, because the harmonic minor scale raises the 7th degree, it means that the gap between the 6th and 7th notes of the scale becomes wider, it becomes a minor third, or an augmented second. This makes the harmonic minor scale sound disjointed when used in melodies, because every other step in the scale is either a semitone or a tone. So, classical composers like Bach, for example, who wanted their melodies to have the powerful resolution of the raised 7th note but did not want the awkward minor third gap of the harmonic minor scale, would often adjust the scale to close the gap. When ascending, they often opted to raise the sixth degree to close the gap and create a natural, evenly spaced climb up to the octave. However, because the leading tone tends to want to resolve upwards, not downwards, when descending down the scale, composers would instead close the gap by flattening the leading tone effectively reverting the scale back to the natural minor scale. So that's the origin of the melodic minor scale, a scale developed to help write smoother melodies in the minor key. However, these scales are not rules, this is not how you must write in the minor key. These, like all scales and all music theory really, are just conventions, just guidelines based on how some composers have approached the minor key in the past. In practice, most composers across the centuries have sometimes stuck to the conventions and sometimes completely ignored them. For example, some of Bach's pieces follow the melodic minor convention, like his Bure in E minor. He raises the 6th and 7th as the melody ascends, and he lowers the 6th and 7th as the melody descends. However, in Bach's Fugue in A minor, from volume 2 of the Well-Tempered Clavier, he sometimes follows the convention, and sometimes doesn't. At bar 25, for example, Bach initially follows the convention, with the melody climbing up using the raised 6th and 7th, and then climbing down using the lowered 6th and 7th. However, immediately after this textbook example of the melodic minor, the melody now climbs up and down using the raised 6th and 7th, abandoning the convention. The melodic minor scale is also used in the traditional English folk song Greensleeves. However, like many traditional tunes, there's actually a few variations of how the melody should go for Greensleeves, so the extent to which it uses the melodic minor scale is dependent on which version of the melody that you're looking at. This version uses the raised sixth throughout, however switches between using the natural and raised seventh degree. But this version freely interchanges both the 6th and 7th between the raised and natural versions. Also, side note, I should take this opportunity whilst we're talking about green sleeves to clarify that the song most likely was not written by Henry VIII, regardless of what your middle school teacher told you. Another way to think about the melodic minor is as a crossbreed of the major and minor scales. The ascending version of the melodic minor is identical to the major scale, but with a minor third. This gives the scale a whimsical, curious tonality, 
which is still minor and melancholic, but not quite as sorrowful or mournful as the natural or harmonic minor scales. The Christmas carol, Carol of the Bells, uses the melodic minor, which lends to its whimsical yet haunting sound. Carol of the Bells also follows the ascending-descending rule, descending with the lowered sixth and seventh, and then ascending with the raised sixth and seventh. Like I mentioned before, nowadays when the melodic minor scale is used, this convention of changing the notes when you're moving upwards versus downwards is generally ignored, and the upwards version is just treated as a standalone scale. Although this scale is rarely seen in pop music, it does appear quite regularly in jazz, and is sometimes referred to as the jazz minor scale. It's often used to improvise with, and it can also be found at the heart of some classic jazz standards. For example, in Autumn Leaves, written by Joseph Cosmer, at the end of the A section, the tune shifts to the relative minor, and the melody ascends up the melodic minor scale, lending a mellow tone to the tune. The falling leaves drift by my window The autumn leaves of red and gold And in Lullaby of Birdland, written by George Shearing, the melodic minor is used in the opening two-bar melody line, before switching to the natural minor for the next two bars. Lullaby in Birdland, that's what I always hear when you sigh. The last example we'll look at today is by an artist well known for her use of less obvious scales, Björk. Björk's 1996 hit Possibly Maybe features a verse in B Lydian and an outro in C sharp melodic minor. We can see the two characterful notes of the melodic minor are found in different parts of this outro. The raised seventh is found in the vocal melody, for example here. And the raised sixth is present in this repeating arpeggio which accompanies the melody. As you can see from the examples we've looked at today, the melodic minor is usually only used as a passing flavour in a piece of music, rather than a tonality that the entire piece can be based on. Whereas you might find a piece of music that stays exclusively within the Dorian scale, or exclusively within the Mixolydian scale, it's very rare to find a piece of music that's exclusively in the melodic minor. This is because, although the melodic minor is great for writing melodies in the minor key, the chords you get when you only use the notes of the melodic minor scale are not very easy to write with. Chord progressions that stay exclusively within the melodic minor scale tend to sound quite limited and a little odd. So most composers won't limit their harmony to exclusively melodic minor when writing in the minor key. When a piece of music is in the minor key, it won't necessarily just stay in one minor scale, and instead will most likely blend different elements of different minor scales to achieve different effects. This is one of the brilliant things about the minor key, it's actually quite a broad tonality that sounds cohesive, yet uses various different scales. That said, you're probably wondering now, but what would a song sound like that did use the melodic minor throughout? Well, I was wondering that too, so I'll leave you today with a piece I wrote exclusively using the ascending version of the melodic minor scale. If you're interested in learning more about the minor scale, do check out my previous video looking at the harmonic minor scale.
And thank you as always to everybody who supports me on Patreon, including all of the names on screen, and Andre Sainz Diaja, Andrew, Andrew Brown, Andy Deacon, Austin Barrett, Austin Russell, Bob McKinstry, Brittany Parker, Cameron Olivena, Chris Cabell, Christopher Ryan, Kieran Bennon, Darren Harvey, D. David Lee Fish, David Defundifer, Dr. Darren Wicks, Eleanor Skorchenko, Esben Hansen, Eugene Leroy, Eyes, F.D. Hodor, Gilnamo Latona, James Kao, J.A. Cockenspaga, Joe Watson, Jonas Soderstrom, Justin Vigor, Lavender Mint Rose, Meg Fellows, Melody Composer Squared, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Paul Muller, Paul Paisel, Peter Dunphy, Roger Clay, Sam Lynn, Steve Daly, Thomas Armstrong, Tim Beaker, Tim Payne, Toot, Vidad Flowers, and Vladimir Kodakov. 